This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, we are back. What's up, bro? I see you in your uh, khakis hanging out on video. You look good. Sebastian Maniscalco fuck, on top of his game and pandemic is just shutting it all down right now. I'm, bro, I'm like, I was listening to my stand up the other day, almost like like an 85 year old in a nursing home who, who's watching old baseball games when he used to play. It's like, what are we doing? I want to get back out there. You must be chomping at the bit. Chomping at the bit. Uh, I don't know where to start, man. Take your time. I got time. I hope you got some time. Let's go slow. Let's get, I got notes. I got stuff. Let's start All right. with uh, Thursday night last week, 10.45 p.m. Okay. Creeping into bed. Uh, underwear. You know, I sleep in my underwear. As you should. You're a man. Pajamas. Come on, what are you, 85? <laughs> Dick Van Dyke wearing pajamas. What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, right. 129 on iTunes. <laughs> Dude, the whole thing is fucked up. <laughs> All right. So, getting in. Yeah. And I... <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? I hear a banging like somebody slammed the door, but it's in the house. All right. And it's loud and it's nearby. All right. Scary. So I go to Lana, what the fuck was that? She's like, I don't know. So I get out of bed. I take the crowbar and I go and investigate. Now, 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 when you first hear that door close and then you ask Lana and then you don't hear anything after that, don't you think the bad guy knows you probably heard the door so he's froze hoping that you go back to bed, right? Right? Like, if you don't hear anything after that initial fucking... Bang, why are you even getting up? Because you, cause you know something might be out there hiding, right? Where'd you get Something's a crowbar, it. bro? Under the bed? I don't know. I don't tell you where I got my weaponry, but I figured a crowbar for this occasion was appropriate. Crowbar in the bedroom. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's... <laughs> Uh, That's aggressive. Put it, yeah, there was other things I could have grabbed, but I figured this was was the appropriate tool. That's that's death. Like, what do you base? Yeah, well, I mean, like, like, what would make you grab a different weapon? For example, like, like a crowbar make you think that there's a intruder is what I'm asking. A, a human being intruder. There's a lot of things racing through my mind right now All right. at this point. All right, I'll back off. All right, all right, continue. So I'm going to do, <clears throat> and I'm only telling you this for sake of the story, but when you got a larger house, for you to do a full uh, assessment of what's going on, it's 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Problems to have, baby. Uh, uh, I'm even proud. Of, even mine takes a good solid seven to eight, which I'm proud of. You know, old Victorian. I'm like halfway through. I forget I'm looking for an intruder. I'm just proud of myself. <laughs> I'm like, look at all the square footage, baby. You did all right. You did. Oh, wait. Yeah, I forgot. We're looking for a bad guy. Focus. Focus. <laughs> You must be patting yourself on your back, walking from roof to roof, like, what the? Oh, yeah, I forgot I got a movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. Oh, God. Yeah. God well, so put it this way. Th yeah. During the assessment, I found two rooms I don't know how to <laughs> 
You're coming back to life. Good news, bad news. Yeah. Good. Good news is, no intruder bad news. We got more decorating to do. I found two more down the, the left wing. Oh, shit. Oh, I found a new office. <laughs> All right. By the time you come back, Lana's like, forgot you were gone. That's how long it takes. <laughs> time I come back, I need a shower. I'm sweating, right? So I I, uh, I go everywhere. Yeah. I even go outside and do a perimeter walk. Wow. Wow, that's that's aggressive. For a, for a, for a slamming-sounding door, did you even figure out what do <clears throat> door you heard? I hung a TV set up in the guest room and I thought it fell off the wall. That's what that's what this sounded like. But everything was intact. All right. All right, this must have been a loud noise for you to go outside. Actually, I could send it to you now. The sound if we wanna if you wanna hear what I heard. Yes. That's pretty loud. That's pretty loud. That's that was a that was a thud, man. Could have been a I, I, in the middle of the night. I might even think that might have been a gunshot. It sounded like somebody fell out of a helicopter and landed on my roof. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We'll get back to this. I think I might have solved it. Oh, we had a Sherlock Holmes moment right here. I think I might have solved this. Hold on. All right. All right. What do you got? Let me take you let me take you through the story. All right. I come back, I lay in bed, I go, I couldn't find anything. I don't know what the hell this thing is. Yeah. And at the same time we look at each other and we say, Ghost? What do you think of that? Uh, if that's uh, nothing. You don't even think? No. Th the place might be haunted. No. 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 What do you mean? What do you mean, no? If, if that's where this whole thing is going, that you and Lana determined that you have a ghost living with you, <clears throat> then I'm going to sit my coffee. You can tell the listeners the rest of this fantasy. And just give me, <laughs> give me a thumbs up and I'll come back in when you're done. All right. Even though I chickened out at that uh, fucking old prison in Pennsylvania, that's that's. Listen, that was because I got a wife and kids, man. I couldn't bring spirits back just in case you're right. But it, come on, in L.A. up in where you are, there's, there's no ghosts. Go ahead. By the way, what kind of noise? What was a thud? Ghosts don't do thuds. I don't know what ghosts do. All right. All right. <laughs> So I, I, don't know, I don't know what they do. So they could they, they could be slamming a door, so and just and then just floating through the house. I, I, don't know. I, I I thought they couldn't pick stuff up and drop it. You know what I mean? Like they can't. Oh, do, I, why not? Well, because the, everything goes through their hand. They can go through walls, <laughs> right? <laughs> what are you fucking saying, bro? Watch you you watch a movie? Come on. So Come so on, watch it. You, you you ever see the chair go from one end to the other? Oh, they do that chair, that chair move. Yeah, yeah. How, okay. how does that happen? All right, all right. Yeah, they can make things move. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, so, what should do you have? A, that's your discovery, or is it? Please tell me. You investigate. All right. Thank God. Dock this thing back so, in reality. So now, <clears throat> I was talking to my lawyer the next day, and I start telling the story, and he goes, uh, "I got a guy." That will come over and get rid of the spirits in the house, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's. <laughs> this is your lawyer. He don't even go, hey, guy, you got to go jogging. I know there's a pandemic. <laughs> get out there, mingle with some human beings. No, he, he goes, I got a card with a fucking Ghostbuster. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All, right. all right, all right. So please tell me you hired this guy. I gave him a call. <laughs> well, no, I, I got the information. I hadn't pulled the trigger yet. Yeah. But I waited the next night to see if 
it happened again around the same time and it didn't happen. Normally it happens from what I understand in yeah. ghost world. It happens around the same time every night, right? That's uh, what I understand. And this is a complete side note. Okay. And I ha I have to address this on the cast. Yeah. Because last week, I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw it on Twitter. Oh. But, well, no. thanks. I saw that. <laughs> okay. Now, you know, as I was saying that, and I'm not making excuses, but as I was saying that, I'm thinking to myself, is this even right? Like, am I even right. telling the right story <laughs> about where this shit came from? <laughs> oh. <laughs> You know, I just, it's subconsciously in the back of my head, I'm like, this don't sound right, but I'm going with it. <laughs> All right. So for those of you that didn't listen last week, I claimed uh, with conviction, I uh, might might add, I, that. I, I bought it. <laughs> the sad <laughs> thing is that you didn't even go, that ain't right. <laughs> well, you guys, because you got a little hot with me, I go, so uh, is a beluga a whale? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, all right. So I didn't know you knew your whales. That's what I said. I spent uh, half the day apologizing to people for a lack of brain function between the two of us. <laughs> right? I, I don't want them listening to the show for the wrong reason. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, man, you don't come here for facts. No. This shit is just, it's just it's, it's half of it's made up. We don't know what we're talking about, but I said that caviar, beluga caviar, came from the beluga whale. <laughs> oh, and I got ripped to shreds on Twitter, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I got, I got, I got a little myself for uh, what do they call it? Enabling. Cop <laughs> going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so ghosting it up here, but on this cast about 10 minutes ago, I realized what I think that sound was. And I have to correlate this with the timing of when this other thing happened. My gardener found another hawk dead on the property right uh unbelievable did, right? Uh, I, I i i literally got in my notes three dead birds because i've got birds dying on my property this is the first <laughs> you mentioned it this is fucking unbelievable bro continue what's going on wait wait, wait 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 did i tell you the story about the no first no i didn't tell you that no you just said another oh. hawk i didn't even know there was a dead hawk on the property to begin with Five weeks in the pandemic, uh -huh. there was a hawk dead on my tennis court. Wow. All right? Wow. You know, uh, this is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Your fucking stories. A lot of Brobian caviar. Hey, funny when you walk through your house and it takes 45 minutes. There was a dead <laughs> hawk on my tennis court. Well earned, bro. Keep fucking saying it. it's it's real life. It's what you got going on. I love it, man. Uh, it's fucking... real life. What's going on? And all this might come to an end if this pandemic <laughs> continues. Because I might be moving back into the place that I that I moved into when I first came out here in '98. Well, before that happens, what I need to know is: Did you notice the dead hawk on the tennis court, or were you going to go play tennis and then you noticed it? The first time I was told about it. Okay. Uh, and uh, this, the guy that kind of does the, runs the house a little bit, he just kind of like a house, house, houseman, I guess you'd call him. Yeah. He called. He, <laughs> <laughs> bro, it's I mean, into your I mean, life, bro. Fucking come on. Don't even sweat it. Fucking worked hard for that <laughs> shit. Let's go. There's a guy well, who takes care of the property. It's a big property. Yeah, he told you there's a dead he, hawk on fucking tennis court. Yeah. <laughs> what, what you do? What the fuck? <laughs> Did you so, guys try to figure out how it died and shit? Well, I thought it had eaten some poison along the way and just fell out of the sky. Uh, That's what I thought. All right. All right. All right. 
he had scooped up the the hawk and disposed of it. Uh, the second hawk was last week. And I'm like, why are these hawks keep dying? And I realized as I was looking around my tennis court, there's glass. They're banging their head on the glass. They're flying right into the glass. They they don't know. Oh, right? Oh, wow. Because I look at the glass and there is feathers. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that boom was the hawk hitting the glass? Pro- probably was, man. It probably was. Wow. Do you, you you don't have a camera on the tennis courts at all time? I do. I just put one in. Wow. Oh, I got to do some investigating. Well, don't you think like, well, maybe <laughs> I'll say it if you're not going to say it. Shouldn't you pause the show and go put like a black blanket over the fucking glass until you can do something about it so no more hawks die? <laughs> Bro, I'm trying to save you protesters on the end of the driveway. Are you getting to that? Well, we, we're thinking of eliminating the glass. I mean, it takes a while to, to have this done. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to wake up every morning and have a fucking... The whole tennis court, I got to scoop up eight birds because they don't know. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> You got to put some orange duct tape over it in the meantime with just an X. (laughs) Do you think they could spot that if they were going down and they're like, oh, no, that's clear. And then. uh, (laughs) (laughs) Well, hey, listen, if if there's one thing to be said for it, it is instant. That's nice. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I I don't know how, how fast they're traveling when they hit this damn thing that they're dying. Right. I mean, I had a bird growing up. It was a parakeet, and we had in our in our front room we had a uh, floor to ceiling covered wall with a mirror, and that bird would go right into the mirror, boom, right hit his beak. His beak would be bleeding, oh. but he didn't die. Oh, yeah. So uh, this thing must be coming in at about eighty miles, <laughs> right. eighty miles an hour. And if, and if he's coming down low, it's probably because he's eyeballing a mouse or a squirrel or something. So, you know, he not only is he coming low now, he's already made a decision that there's nothing in the area. So now his eyes are locked on the ground. He ain't even well, looking. Yeah. Another, another part to the story. All right. Next morning, dead rat on the, on, on my, in my backyard. Just laying there, oh. dead rat. Oh yeah, that's that was that was, he dropped that when he when he hit. You think he, you think he dropped it? I one hundred percent wasn't even near where he was though. I'm just wondering, bro, why I got all this death on my property. I got snakes. Now, uh, now I found uh, out I got gophers. Did I tell you this? No, no. So the gardener goes, you got gophers going through your lawn like it's, there's a lot of them. They're just screwing up the soil. So if you know anything about gophers, they come through the lawn and they, they, they almost churn the soil so you look like, yeah. it's like little tunnels. Yeah. And uh, the guy gave me an estimate, $450 to smoke them out of the holes, right? And then... <laughs> I knew I was on to it. I got you got to tell me how he does it because I remember I was doing it with the smoke bombs. <laughs> Are you going to pay? It? You, yeah. Well, if you remember correctly, I had a snake on the property about five weeks ago. It's called a gopher snake. And right. they told me it's good to have this thing on the property because it kills gophers. They removed the gopher snake. Apparently, word got out in the gopher community that the snake has been removed from my property. 
and they basically called in everybody that said the snake's gone. Get over here. It's it, it's it's a field day over here. Oh right? man! So when you sent me the video of the guy putting the gopher snake in the bag, here we are acting like he's some macho hero. Meanwhile, he's walking away whispering to his buddy, "I got a gopher problem on my property. <laughs> this is going to be fantastic." And like you said, now it's like, ah, here we go. It's like walls down. Come on, bring your family. Holy <laughs> so, shit! So I got, I got thirty eight gophers running through the through the property, uh, you know, and, and then they know that the gopher snake is gone, and they got free range. Now I said four fifty for the for the smoke bomb. I said fuck for one hundred fifty, bring back the snake. Right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, <laughs> man. You know, give me give me three or more of the gopher snakes. I'll have them take care of the problem. Bro, your property is a gopher utopia. Because any other <laughs> gophers, when they get the news, they still go, ah, you're up on the mountain, the hill there. It's still not safe with the hawks. And they go, no, no, here's the kicker. The hawks are just dying in the air. <laughs> Mid-flight, they're all just drop, And they're dropping food. Yeah. So, what do you mean, the hawks? Yeah, no, we can't even explain it. They just fly by right before they get us. They just die. <laughs> 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 oh my god the thing is it's such a yin yang thing where you are you know it's like okay i gotta have gopher snakes because gopher snakes get rid of the gophers but the reality is i'd rather have gophers that don't fuck up the lawn than snakes at all right if the gophers would just behave themselves and keep that shit underground i'd prefer to see a gopher once in a while instead of a fucking three-foot snake right oh ain't it good to have around what ain't good to have around i don't want any of this shit around man where's the one-stop shopping guy right where's the one guy who comes and go listen anything that's human being that's not human will be dead within a 300 yards radius in 45 minutes and you're going now you're talking the language I could under what are we doing about uh airborne? Don't worry. We're gonna go higher with the glass. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I tried to smoke out my chipmunks. Now, bro, this is what's so weird, right? We don't have the kind of minds where like, okay, two days ago or three days ago, I go out back and there's a dead bird. And uh, I go in, I get Sadie, and we come out to investigate. Maybe a cat got it, we're not sure. Jackie goes, you know, they hit the windows, like you said. They hit our windows and stuff. I'm like, yeah, we're in the back. There's no window back here. Next yeah. next day, dead baby bird, no more than three weeks old, right on my driveway. It, was, it, it felt like a message, you know? And we got a cat in the neighborhood that's like, Fucking, we call him Stone Face Killer because sometimes I catch him up in my tree. I hear all the birds chirping, and he's trying to get at the baby birds up there. So I was thinking maybe it was him, but come to find out they were gone with the cat on a little bit of a vacation, so it's not that. Then yesterday, cracked open egg, baby bird still in the shell, right? And like, and then you're telling me yours. This is the part in a movie where the guy goes. What's going on here? You know, and then like the movie <laughs> kicks in, but not me and you. I don't know what you're doing. I'm taking these and the babies still haven't moved in yet next door. I'm throwing the dead birds in their backyard. <laughs> By the time they move in, there's going to be 42 fucking dead birds back there. Right? And I'm still not going to go, hey, geez, I wonder if that Wuhan's gotten into the birds or something. <laughs> Nothing. I just throw them in the neighbor's yard and go about my fucking day. I'm wearing the damn mask. I'm wearing the mask. Everybody, I'm wearing it now. I just want to say officially. But can we all just pump the brakes on the idea that if everyone wears the mask, this thing's going to go away? <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's just something you all want to get pissed off about something. So it's the mask. All right. So everybody yeah. put the mask on and then you'll see the shit ain't going away. And maybe you'll tone it down with the mask. Anyway, bro, I don't know what you're going to do. It sounds like you either got to get used to living the wildlife type life or uh, you're going to have to uh, you're going to have to do a mask gas out of the whole out of property. <laughs> 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 oh man, I like your idea. Bringing that guy one stop shop. He goes, listen for for eight grand. I'm not only gonna get rid of anything that's crawling or flying, but 
in, insects too. I had to buy them that that mosquito thing that that was my prop for the for the zoom. Yeah. Cause I'm I'm getting eaten alive at night with my wife as we're drinking wine. I'm getting my ankle snipped at. Oh shit! I don't get bit. I'm surprised you do. Italians, we give off a chemical that the mosquitoes, they don't they don't bite us, man. Oh, no, no, I got a, I got the reverse, bro. I've been hiking with Lana. I'm telling you, I go on a hike within three or four minutes. Oh. I give a swarm of like, uh, it's like a, it's like a. I don't know. One of the, you ever get one of those bugs that just kind of live around your face and yeah. they're just doing a lot of uh, <laughs> yeah. a lot of head movement. <laughs> I got about nine of those swirling around my head as I'm hiking. I look at Lana; she's clean, nothing swimming around her head. I must be giving off a fucking Italian Sicilian blend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but those those <laughs> bugs you're talking about. I know what you're saying. They don't even really bite. They're always just like hovering, saying, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Right. So like <laughs> from a scientific standpoint, what are they doing? Like, what are they getting out of being in our face right there? You know, <laughs> are they nipping and we don't feel it? Is it just <laughs> it just feels like they're going, oh, yeah, we'll fuck them. With them. Oh, yeah, they're going to get the fuck out of here. They're going to get the fuck out. Right. <laughs> That's what I feel. I mean, when I get bit, I get it. You're eating me. But that shit. <laughs> That yeah, I don't know. Like that old fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. I don't shit. know. I don't know if they're sniffing the perfume or the cologne or the hair products, and they're oh. just, they're just oh. getting high from it. Oh. I don't know what they're. I don't know what they're doing. But my question to you: If you got one of these things right yeah. all around you, and yeah, let's yeah. say you 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 clap it yeah. and you kill it in your hands, right? Yeah. Do you think another one just comes by automatically, or is once you kill one, you don't really see another one. I'm just trying to figure out no. if they send one, they go, Freddie, go go <laughs> by his face, right? And right. then they're looking, he's like, yeah, Freddie's got him. And they're like, oh, shit, Freddie got killed. Send out send out Johnny. Let, no. let Johnny go. It's amazing, right? They don't seem to have that capacity at all. You ever just see two ants crawling together? You kill one, the other one just like, it just doesn't even stop walking. It's like nothing. <laughs> it's very odd. You I don't know. <laughs> you don't think the other ant looks and goes, "Oh man, what the hell happened to him? Like, where'd that come from?" You don't. There's not. There's none of that. No, I don't. I even with the with the, the we have a bird nest above our porch. Every year, the lady puts the birds in there. The robin puts up lays her eggs, right? And there's three baby birds, and we'll climb on the ladder and look down at them. And we and she comes every morning and. Gives them the worms. We watch it through the window. I said to Jack, if we took all these baby birds out, so when she came back from a feed and they're not here, I go, you think she's just gonna like sit in the nest and weep and shit? Like, movie. <laughs> <laughs> and Jackie's like, oh, no, she'll just fly away. Like, you know, she'll just fly away. I go, I go, then why doesn't she just fucking fly away now? Like, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't get it. The animals get sad. Like I know they say elephants <laughs> doing shit, but <laughs> yeah. By the way, let's get back to the nets. You're going into the woods with cologne, guy. What? Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Let's say the night before. Yeah. I put a little cologne on. I go uh, to sleep. Wake up. Yeah. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna go to work out in. I just put on some workout clothes, and I still have remnants yeah. from last oh, night's yeah. cologne I lingering know. around my neck. Fair right? Enough. That's I, what that's what they're smelling. You got it. You probably have about four hundred and seventy-two dollars worth of beauty products. <laughs> I've, I've remnanted on at some point. Like, you're right, because I I could I go with deodorant. I could two, two day, like the next day go, oh, I forgot to put it on, you know, that day. I do a reach in. There's still dangling pieces connected, <laughs> like air fresheners, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you could get away with three, four days. So, yeah, there's a lot for the bugs to get in on us, bro. Yeah, man, there's a lot going on with me when I go on a hike. There's a lot of, there's a lot of scent. Uh, actually, I think they could find me if I got lost in the forest just by the scent alone. You know, like sometimes they say, oh, there's a hiker that's, that's been missing for three days. I feel as soon as I go missing and they let the dogs loose <laughs> within 13 minutes. <laughs> 
<laughs> that dog don't even run out looking for you. He just looks at the boss barking like he's by the river. <laughs> 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 He's just follow follow the what was it be Aramis, bro? I don't want I don't want to insult you. Is that a cologne that a man would wear? I, uh, I, yeah, I think that's an older cologne. I got right now. I'm using an Izzy Miyake. Nice. It's a beautiful. It's an older one too. I used to wear it in '99. Actually, it used to be my go-to scent. Beautiful. I got um, I, I gotta get a cologne. Every I don't even I I gotta get it. Just a little dab. Yeah, I mean, you need something just under the ear. Yeah. Oh. You know, right, right here. Just give it a little pop right here and right here, and you're ready to go. Oh, but yeah, you're putting it right in the wheelhouse of the bugs, though, man. That's where they love it, right up in there, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. So here's another one I wanted yeah. to throw by. Yeah. So do you have, like, let's say if Lana and I came over to spend the weekend, do you have a room where we could stay that has a bed in it? Um, yes. Well, I have two options. One, I have a, a pull-out couch that is has a bed for two people. And I make it, I made sure, I even did a sleep on it one night after I bought it and I put a piece of wood under it that you wouldn't know was there that makes it firm. Or I can go with these other two uh, beds that are metal that I uh, hit the bar and they pop up. But yeah, no air mattresses, but no, not a permanent bed with a bed frame. Not that. Okay. So we have a couple rooms that we want to set up as quote unquote guest rooms. Right. My question to you is... Do you put in the guest room the bed that you like to sleep on? Or do you totally go, let's say I like a firm mattress. Yeah. Do I go with a soft or a medium? Or do I go with a firm in all the guest rooms because that's what I like? What's your take on providing sleeping arrangements for a guest and getting a bed, what, where do you, what way do you go? Wow. Wow, man. I mean, that's exciting that I could literally <laughs> give my bed what preference I want if I'm staying over. Like, you go, by the way, before you and Jackie get here, you like firm or soft mattress? <laughs> that is well, that's class. what I'm doing. I'm taking a survey of people that might spend the night or two or three at my house yeah, and getting a collective uh, analysis of what people like. So let's say I ask 10 people, I get seven firm and three soft. I'm going seven because that's the majority, you know, the people that yeah. like soft. Yeah. However, <laughs> yeah. came up with this wrinkle. What if... What if you came over and I go, what kind of type of mattress you like? And you go, firm. And I go, all right, let me take you to the room that has the firm mattress. What if I, I, I need three beds. What if I do a firm, medium, and soft and give people the option of where they want to stay? <sighs> Are all rooms equal with an equal view? Because if one room has a killer view, but it doesn't have the level mattress I want, I'd rather sleep on a level I don't normally sleep on to have a view I don't normally have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So you would go with, you would sacrifice comfort of sleep for aesthetics when it comes to the view. Yeah, I mean, if you're given a choice, I would prefer just a walkthrough show of all three rooms and, and each room tell me what kind of bed it has among it. And then we'll come out and you go, by the way, you can have any one of those three rooms. And then I'm like, wow, you know, as opposed to I go, I like a firm mattress. And then you start going downstairs. I'm looking at Jackie. Oh, fuck. We're in the basement. I should have said soft. <laughs> I should have said soft. <laughs> well... If I came to your house and out of those two bed options, would you give me the options or would you just tell me where I'm sleeping? I'd call you ahead of time. It's in the same room. I get I'm good. I'd get the fucking couch out of there. Just won't even bro. 
Uh, more importantly, it would both all be in the same room, uh, but I could keep the couch and bring up the other two things, but you'd have your own bathroom, um, which is just, you know, so even if I said, hey, I have a, a bed you might like a little more, but it's down the hall for me, Jack and Sadie. You might bump into one of us in the middle of the night <laughs> taking a piss. You, you go, bro, I'll sleep in my fucking rental car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. So, so, but all things, we, yeah, I, I think that's an incredible touch. What about just getting one of those adjustables for every bed? Uh, I don't. We had a bed, and I forget what it was. This is when I first started dating Lana. It was one of those beds where it moves like your half. If you wanted to go on an incline, your bed would go on it, and she'd be sleeping flat. You know, it was one of those yeah. adjustables, yeah, which I didn't really care for. Uh, right now, I called the guy over at the uh, mattress store. And uh, there are so many options now with mattresses and brands. And I'm asking the guy over the phone. I go, "What would you? Because because this is this is in Orange County. I ain't going in to a mattress store during COVID and rolling around on beds, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I Just told him, I go, "This is what we bought last time we were in there." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I go, what do you got? He goes, yeah, we don't make that model, but the, the model we make that's that's replacing that's a really good bed. And I go, well, I don't want to get the level bed that I sleep on. And I don't want to give that bed to the guest. I think it's a little, because it's more expensive. It's like almost double. So I'm not going to buy a bed and let it sit there for 360 days out of the year. You know, I, I'd rather get a nice, comfortable bed that you could sleep on, but nothing, like, yeah, crazy. Of course. So this guy's going through the whole thing. And I'm like one of these guys that saves the receipts. So when I bought my bed in 2016, yeah. it was 3600 All right. The bed now, he quoted me, it's 4500 I go, guy. There's a markup of a, I mean, I know there's price inflation. Yeah. But this bed went up a thousand dollars. He goes, yeah, man, these beds go up. You know, it's like, it's like crazy the amount of money these beds go up for. But I'm going to give you my deal. Mm. Since you, <laughs> since, since you saved your receipt. <laughs> I remember what I charged you last time. I'll give you my deal. <laughs> So he's, he he threw me with the I'm gonna give you my, the Fourth of July discount. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> in his head he's like, oh, thank God there's a holiday coming up. I I was ri I'm riffing this. I'm riffing this whole fucking thing. <laughs> oh God, Bunk. So he gave me the discount. I ended up getting two beds. Yeah. One firm, one soft. Nice. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna. I'm gonna put because I got Fourth of July. We're doing a we're doing a party here for myself, uh, the Fourth of July, and my mother's seventy fifth. And I got no beds for these people to stay tonight. Did you pass out? No, I dropped my pen. <laughs> wow, your mom's seventy fifth. Fantastic. By the way, I was going to say when you were done saying that, you should just get the best bed that your mom wants, and then any other guest. You they could be like, oh, I like my mattress firm. That's a soft one. You go, well, you know, I got it soft because when my mom stays here, she likes it soft. So yeah, you can. Yeah. Well, you, I you, asked, I asked her already. I, I got, I got. Uh, but no matter what I get my mom, she's gonna complain. Hey, that, no, no, it's that's not as soft as I thought it would be. I, I gotta get one of that. Oh, really? <laughs> Are you going to have a fireworks display, or is everyone just going to sit around and watch the Hawks crash land all after? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping. I'm hoping there's fireworks where we live. This is the first 4th of July that I'm spending here at the house, so I'm hopefully in the backyard we could see some some fireworks go off. If not, you know, I'm just going to get some sparklers for the kids. So you mean fireworks in the distance, obviously, not anywhere near where you are because of the fire situation, right? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, like normally, uh, some of the studio. Yeah. yeah, some of the studios. Uh, 
But I mean, I, with this COVID, I don't even know if people are doing fireworks. Like, where's the firework display in Fredonia? Cool, man. It's in my driveway, bro. I already went uh, to the tent, uh, Indian reservation, and got my my stuff, man. It's got thirty five hours worth of stuff already. That's a problem, though. I'm so white trash. When you get your fireworks too far in advance. Can't help it, like, uh, you know, me and Sadie have been lighting that shit off randomly at 9.30 in the morning. Jack is yelling out the window. <laughs> you can have nothing left. They don't fucking worry about it. So, we got to see what this shit does, Mom. So, well, actually. <laughs> so, what what did you, what do you get? Like, what's the, what kind of fireworks do you get? I keep it, my the kid's seven, you know? So even like the main display I buy is $25 and the box says driveway show. So, you know, right away it's telling you this, you know, this shit's not going to get too nuts. Um, I have a buddy I told you about has this July 3rd party by us on the lake. We light a big bonfire or he does awesome. And he goes out and him and his friends buy like, giant all these fireworks and they light them all off so i've come to know what's what they, they get the big shit all the shit i get is like nothing that scares kids too much but it gets pretty it gets pretty up there some rockets some you know no no loud noises though no like m80s and shit do you get that one that you light and it that goes and it spins yeah and it's got like that used to be able to nail that to a tree or something sometimes, right? And it would spin. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, you my talking about? group didn't didn't do didn't nail anything to a tree. It was just you lit it, and literally it spins around and it shoots like different colors out of it. This might be a little bit more advanced nah, nah, than, nah. The dr the, than the driveway show. Yeah. But when you go, I never even been to a fireworks store. What? sections do they have do they have driveway and then do they have lake and do they have white house uh like, well wh you, you you could see size wise by the way I, i'm really not appreciating your response to my driveway show it's a little bit bigger than your little uh, whistle thing there that you're talking about we get some shit going bro <laughs> it gets up there roman candles uh, okay so yeah no this this ain't uh this is a little bit more advanced i thought this was kind of like snakes and snaps and, and sparkle. Oh my God! No, I mean, on low end, on low end is I do hand out. I do hand out the little white fucking snaps before we start, just to keep the kids occupied before I get going. But yeah, no, this is this is enough that if a cop came by, I'd be like, blow out the candle. Let's let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. <laughs> let's wait right? Let me ask you a question. All right, I told you last week about damage in the Tahoe. So. I, I take it to a collision guy who comes highly recommended, right? Very nice guy. I'm just talking here for the fun of the cast. Very nice guy. It's going to cost me 11 hunch to get everything fixed. The door's got to be repainted, the whole nine yards, right? Say, no problem. Let's set it up. I come home with the estimate, and I notice at the bottom of the receipt, it says, Jesus is our Lord and the Savior, Right? It's on it's on every page when you flip. He's got that at the bottom, right? Man. Nah. Now, I know that uh, you know, uh, you know, the family I, you know, they're in church and stuff like that, and I get that. Now, two questions. One, if you're not Catholic, right? Are you like, yo, I don't, I don't need this on my receipt? Or, like, 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 even like, let's say he was like hypothetically Muslim or something, and it said praise to Allah, you know, like, you know, do I go, okay, hey, I, I don't, I don't need getting audited by the IRS, and it says praise to Allah on my fucking <laughs> body collision on my Tahoe. <laughs> uh. It's just not my religion, right? You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Is that a little aggressive, well, putting your religious well. uh, motto on the receipt? <laughs> <laughs> well, even though you're Catholic, did you take offense to it? I'm bringing it up to you, guy. <laughs> yeah. I was like, let's keep church in church, guy, or your bumper <laughs> sticker. Not on my receipt for the collision damage. I think that's a little aggressive to be putting, uh, you know, religious statements on receipts and you're doing business with people. Uh, Although it's, the, you know, I don't know. Something tells me here, here, I'll throw this one at you. Probably my don't second you, question. 
What? It's probably going to be my second question. Bring it up. Don't you feel when you read that, that it was an honest estimate? That's what he <laughs> wants me to feel, bro. That's why he looks at his assistant and goes, wow, Tommy, that's 400 over what it really is. Just stamp the Jesus is all on prayer at the bottom of the fucking receipt. I'll tighten it right up. <laughs> <laughs> do, you think, do you think anybody looks at this shit? Honest to God, do you think that people can take the receipt? Hey, go, babe, get over here. Look at this. The fucking Lord Jesus Christ is on the receipt. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if I spend enough, do I get a Bible on the way out too, guy? What's going on here? I just... So, so uh, but that's what... Uh, to your point, bro, I feel... At first, I thought, you know what? That's that's an honest man right there. I know this must be the course for an honest, honest job. But then, you know, of... About a half hour later, I'm like, wait a minute. You can pull the wool over my eyes only a handful of times throughout the course of this cast. Well, what if you did do a callback and go, you know what? I've been looking at this. 1100 seems a little high, right? Yeah, yeah. And, well. and he comes back and and he goes, Pete, you, you honestly think I would, would charge you extra when the Lord is watching us? <laughs> Oh, man. I, that would make me feel bad for even questioning it to begin with. You know? So, well, this is interesting because I'm looking at the receipt, and one of the things it says for the logo that says Tahoe, the lettering, T-A-H-O-E, got to get that taken off and is going to get a brand new one off for like $79. So Jackie comes in from looking at the Tahoe, and she goes, only the T was a little scratched, Pete, and I just wiped it. I buffed it right out. We don't need the new Tahoe lettering. That's fine. So I call. I don't get him. I get someone who works for him. I go, yeah, it's Pete Guerrero. You got the Tahoe. Uh, we're going to do – because they're not working on it yet. They got to wait for the parts to come in. So I go, listen, can you, you? I don't need the Tahoe lettering. Turns out we were able to wipe that right out, so the lettering's fine. And the person goes, no problem. And I go, all right, great, thanks. The guy calls back 10 minutes later, and very nicely, he goes, yeah, I know the Tahoe lettering is fine, but when I paint the car door, I got to take the Tahoe lettering off to paint the car door properly, and you just can't get those off without cracking them, you know? So, and I'm like, oh, yeah, no, then absolutely, absolutely, then you got to get the Tahoe logo, of course, of course, of course, you know? So, uh, I well what, what do you think of that? I mean, do you think they really crack? Or if this guy was careful, he could put, pull it off and put it back on, no problem. That's, bro, I, it's like like minds. It's unbelievable because in my head, I'm like, if I was talking to an Italian guy, I'd be like, well, guy, isn't it your job to get the fucking Tahoe lettering off without cracking it? I mean, you know, or why don't you go for it and maybe you'll get it off without cracking it. And if you don't, then we order it. But let's, you know, let's try and get but when you're dealing with someone who puts Lord and Jesus Savior at the bottom of the receipt, you can't help thinking, yeah, I can't be uh, aggressive with this guy. He's practically a priest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Well, you bring up a good point here, and it's, it's, it's kind of going to segue into, and I wasn't going to bring this up, but I might as well since we're talking about business and transactions and what yeah. have you. So I'm trying to sell a, a home, the home that we lived in prior to this home. Uh -huh. it's, been on, it's been on the market uh, for a good six months. Uh, the real estate agent that we had selling it, uh, nice guy and all. I just don't think that this is a priority for him. Oh, wow. Uh, uh -huh. You want to get on? You might want to pop on here. Just Hello. Uh, right here. Hey, hey, how are you? I can only faintly hear because. It... Oh, he, she can't hear you because you're in the. You're in the. But look, look at this. The protein shake delivered right up to the cast. Wow. Straw options. Straw oh, options. Wow. Beautiful. The Nutri Bullet was broken in the making of this. Oh gosh, I can't believe you go with a Nutri Bullet. Is that the little the, the... All right. I've what, it broke? 
All right, we'll talk later. Thank you. Very sweet of you. Matt. Hold on, drop. Bye, Pete. Bye, Lana. Good seeing you. So. Yeah. The guy I had selling the house was one of these, uh, you know, Hollywood uh, real estate guys, like moving and shaking. It's got a lot of, a lot of homes worth a lot of money. So is I he in mine, that show? I watched that show. Uh, he's in a, he's in, he's in a show. I don't know which one he's in. What's? Oh, come on, bro. Oh uh, man, can you text me his name or something? I watched the Millionaire Listings of L.A. No, that's not it. All right, then I wouldn't know him. Okay. By the way, folks, I only watch that because my wife watches it, and I want to spend some time with her, so I'm locked in. Go ahead. All right. So it was just better that we part ways and go with a new guy, guy that's a little bit more probably in this price range. Yeah. So we talked to him on the phone. Nice guy. Seemed hungry. Very passionate. And he's like, I can't wait to see the house. So I meet him at the house, and he's uh, super excited. He's like, man, I just got off the phone with my PR agent, and they love the house, and they love that you're a comedian. And what they told me uh, what we could do is we could hire a camera crew, and you could go through the house and kind of make like a funny – video about the house and what you guys did to it and I go whoa whoa guy okay, okay. <laughs> I said uh, <coughs> this Barry Manilow when he lists a house sing a song about his house in his house to sell it <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing that, man. He goes, what? what? Why not? I go, you're going to sell the house. <laughs> what the fuck? Am I, I'm going to hire you and I'm going to sell it? I'm going to do a video? What is this, Cribs? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, I hire you. I go somewhere else. You call me and I go, great. Take it. We'll take yeah. it. Yeah. Oh. This is not, I hire you, and then I got to meet you back here tomorrow <laughs> for a 7 a.m. call time <laughs> so we could, we could do a 13-hour shoot <laughs> and sell in the house. He's, he's going to go, listen, Sebastian, I was up all night trying to figure out what room you should close with. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh I think at God. the end you end up in the backyard and go, and this is the pool. So do yourself a favor and be the one who gets to live and do the, and do a back plunge into the pool, bro. As the drone moves out with an aerial view. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and they get a signed video copy of that film. <laughs> From you, if they buy the house. Oh, my God. I was like, this is unbelievable, man. I never even heard of such a thing. Oh, man. Yeah, that's what they, they, they do crazy stuff now, these realtors. I watch it on those real estate shows to try and generate business, man. Get people talking. Yeah, but around. did you ever have the, the, do they have the, have the client trying to sell the house on video? No, oh, no, but they have these little cutesy parties that they invite all the other realtors. But, no, yeah, they... They don't get the client involved. I, I, everyone I've ever seen, though, they always go back to the client and go, "We gotta, we gotta lower." It. It's always, <laughs> it's, it's never. You're not gonna believe this. You ask this, I got you that and another thirty. Never, <laughs> never. This is what I. They, they always suggest. Yeah, we're gonna have a open house for the for the uh, for the brokers, right? Yeah. And I go, all right. And they're like, yeah, we'll serve, serve. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? You know, they're going to have uh, hors d'oeuvres and champagne. What, why? Is that going to sell the house? No, it's a whole scam, I'm telling you. <laughs> they all just go from party to party. Yeah. 
And then they, and then if you happen to be there as the owner, you come in, they'll go, oh, really excited about it. I already, I already got some clients in, in some fucking <laughs> fake city they'll give you. I got some clients in Rome looking for a place in LA, and this is perfect. It's walking, it's the, yeah. where's the cheese? Is there any cheese? Yeah. <laughs> I know, bro. Yeah. You know what they, al they always say? What? And this is, this might not be in Fredonia. They, 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 this, I've heard this time and time again. I have the perfect gay couple that would love this house. That's I've oh. been getting that. I've been getting that for two years. Oh yeah. <laughs> you should I go, yeah? I'd love to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, that, that, you know, and by the way, that's such a stereotypical term because that's implying this house is great for people that don't have kids, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which Anderson Cooper, come on, man, they all got babies. What are you talking about? She said Yeah. Um, oh man! I gotta, I gotta run something by you, man to man. I'm, I'm watching. I've been watching a lot of movies lately, right? I'm watching the other night, classic. I loved it before. Eyes Wide Shut. You ever see it? Stanley Kubrick, Tommy C, Tommy Cruise, and Nicole Kidman. Never seen it. Thought it was a little weird when it came out. It looked weird, and I was like, I don't know if I want to watch it. Yeah, no, nah, I hear you. We were younger back then. We wanted all the action movies, but it's a stunning film. I believe it was Kubrick's last film. Took him like two years to make. It's, I've seen it a few times. I really like it. Right? Should check it out. You really should. As a as a as a thespian. So, by the way, I'm watching it again with Jackie. We both decided to watch it Saturday night, and she goes. Nicole Kidman's such a better actor than Tom Cruise, it's unbelievable. I literally had to pause and give it a look like, like as if she just said, Jesus Christ doesn't exist. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I, come on, come on. Let's, let's tone it down. Tommy sees the, and then we put the movie back on for the next two hours. I couldn't not see it. Holy shit. He was getting out acted all over the fucking place. I'm like, put your hands down, Tom. Put them down. He's just always waving his hand. Then he does this, he's got to be sad. He's doing the f ha fingers through the hair with the head down. <laughs> That's my move. That's what you do when you can't act and you got to be sad. You just put your head down and go, is, is that long enough? Can I bop up now? <laughs> I thought, I'm looking at Kidman's looking at him mid scene going, I am divorcing this hack as soon as this movie wraps. <laughs> and I love Tommy C. But she's just a phenomenal actress. Now, this brings me to my point, bro. And it, it bothered me when I watched it years ago, and it bothered me again last uh, Saturday night. She does this unbelievable monologue uh, um, on her bed, hanging out with her husband, Tom Cruise, late night one night. And I'll cut it short, but she basically tells him, remember that night we stayed at the Da 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 Hotel for a weekend? He's like, yeah. Remember that sailor that came in? There was three of them. And he's, Tom's like, no, I don't. She goes, well, I do. And I couldn't stop thinking about him. And I fantasized about him. And I laid in bed in that hotel that night and thought to myself, if he wanted to take me away, I would leave you and our daughter and go away with him. And it's so weird because I love you so much. And then he comes home and wakes her out of a dream. And she tells him she's giggling in her dream. And when he wakes her up, he's like, what was your dream about and stuff? He gets home late night and she goes, I was dreaming about that sailor again. And we were fucking and then we were fucking and then I was fucking other men and all these men were fucking me and you were right there and I was laughing at you and I couldn't stop laughing while they were fucking me. And then you woke me up. That's when you woke me up now. <laughs> Now, okay, first of all, he, he he's obviously he grabs his wallet. He's like, I got to get the fuck out of here for a second. Figure this shit out. Now, I look at Jackie. I go, this is a slippery slope because you didn't cheat on me. But I, you're out of here. I'm done with you. You, bro, right? Would you ever forgive a woman for those words? Even if she goes, I'm sorry, I just wanted to hurt you with my words as bad as I could. I'd be like, well, you you did it. Congratulations. You get half the shit. Shop around. Pick what you want because this shit's <laughs> over. Is that forgivable? <laughs> Bro, I didn't know how to. It's a tricky thing. It's a slippery slope. Well, do they have a good relationship up to this point? And she tells them this or is it on the rocks? No, it's pretty magical. I mean, they're rich. They got a lot of money. They do. I mean, it starts off with her at this party, and he seems to be flirting a little too much with these two pretty girls, and she's flirting with a guy. So <laughs> you don't know what's what, but I'm just saying. 
Yeah, no, you can't come back from that. After she yeah. tells you that, you basically get your Toomey suitcase out of the closet, pack your underwear and your shoes, and you get the hell out of the house. I mean, like that. <laughs> I'm right there. Yeah, every, I mean, every time, even if you forgive her, any time for the next 30 years, she moans in bed halfway through the night. I'm like, oh, she's fucking the guy again. She's fucking the guy again. <laughs> <laughs> if she's like, I'm tired, I'm going to go to bed early. She wants to go to bed early so she can have more time dreaming about fucking the guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to drive me nuts. Shit, man. Oh, by the way, I had our first um, Rappaport Zoom Pitch with a network. On I go on Zoom. How's pitching over Zoom? That's what I'm bringing up, bro. For uh, me and you, uh, we need the room. I need the room. I come up. First of all, we go to start the pitch. I look at everybody's box. Now everybody's in their home office, or at the very least, their kitchen. I got the black backdrop basically that I got going here for the show the cast but i got uh, i'm using my uh, jackie's uh laptop because i mean her ipad because she has a zoom on it and i got these bright lights on me to make sure everybody sees me and then when i plug in i literally look like you know when like uh the taliban or al-qaeda has a hostage and they make him <laughs> do a video for the family saying you know <laughs> send money i'm okay but i don't know how long i will be that's that's what i look like man my my backdrop, and I'm I'm wondering, am I already being judged, even if they don't realize they're judging me, for not having this, uh, you know, an office type backdrop as opposed to, because my things, bro, I'm trying to go like, don't, I'm not giving them anything else to think about behind me. No books, no posters. You look at my screen, all you're gonna see is this Italian mug. Take it or leave it. And half Irish. I go with the way you're doing it. It's nondescript. You are the focal point. You could be in your home in Fredonia, or you could be in a studio in Philadelphia. We don't even know where you're at. I like the dark background. I would go with that, but I do have to tell you, do you ever get the Zoom where the people make up their background, like it's like the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so on Zoom, <laughs> yeah, there's people now. What you could do is you could pick your background. So if you want to pick, uh, yeah, Niagara New Falls, York, baby. Anything. Yeah, Niagara Falls. You could have a photo behind you, right? <clears throat> yeah. So I've gotten on these Zooms <laughs> where I'm looking at the Zoom. And the way I've done my Zoom is I've done it a little bit more with the books in the background. It's more of a, it pops out at you. Because I look at the Zoom and I look at me and I go, am I popping out on this Zoom because I know that's me? Or am I popping off the page here because I've really curated my Zoom experience, because some people, when you look at their Zoom, you literally, they they almost blend into the rest. Of <laughs> like, you don't even know they're there, right? Because yeah. there's, there's no thought behind the, behind the, no lighting, nothing. <laughs> yeah. They just look like another shade of, of like, uh, the background that they're in, right? Yeah, yeah. So you, so you... Definitely got to look at your backdrop and like the accentuating office and whatnot that you have going. Yeah, but I like the way you're doing it, too, where you're like, you know, there's no one's going, oh, wow, this guy's got three trophies from the NCAA championship. <laughs> so the whole time you're pitching at the thing, I'm looking at your trophies. <laughs> yeah, right. right? If you see any movement in the window in the background, you're like, what is that guy got a dog? What is he got going back there? <laughs> <laughs> right? So so now we're going to start the Zoom. It's me rapping, uh, the other writer and the producer, and we're waiting. Now, again, because it's Zoom, a guy pops on, and he doesn't even have a picture yet. 
And and they were all talking to him about something with the network. I don't want to say the network they were at. And he's like, yeah, it's going good. And then he goes, so how are you guys? Right. And now I'm like, oh, man, I got my notes next to me. I go, it looks like we're going right into the pitch. And I'm like, but I'm looking at the guy's name at the bottom of the screen. I go, that's not any of the people listed in the meeting here. What are we? <laughs> so what's going on? Right. So then his screen opens up and it's you see him and he's saying he's just somebody else and we're waiting but it makes me look at everyone else's name, which I didn't notice at the bottom of your screen. You have your name. Oh, yeah. God. I look at mine. It says Jackie Corielli. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you know, what, you know what I see when I see that? Because <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen that, too, where I, I pop on and they got the... I go, oh no, the guy don't even have a computer. <laughs> uh, bro, I'm laughing because it's obviously all right, bro. People are judging, you're making me realize. So now I got the black backdrop, which is a beige canvas curtain I spray painted with four cans of spray paint. I got uh, my wife's laptop that says, uh, like an iPad that says Jackie Corielli. And then the woman gets on, who we're pitching to. Uh, by the way, this lady was so cool. Thank gosh, man. So she was really great, and that was cool. But in my head, I'm like, do I uh, you know, just assume, because she read the script and stuff, do I assume that she knows it's my name's Pete, or... <laughs> You know, she's probably going to look at the box and she's going to call me Jackie and go, Jackie, can you tell me a little bit more about the blah, blah, blah plot? And I go, then I'm going to have to fucking either just be Jackie, Jackie, for the sake of fluidity with this Zoom or, you know, explain. So I go the opposite. Be guys will start. I go, by the way, uh, I'm Pete, not Jackie Corielli, obviously, <laughs> I'm using my wife's laptop. Bro, I didn't know. When you, I thought I didn't know when you got like you get Zoom personally. Like Jackie had Zoom on a thing, so I figured I'd log on to Zoom, and now I got Zoom. I didn't know it's yeah, Zoom. it's like Skype. You know, like your name's on Skype. So if you if if Jackie used your that. computer, yeah. So so that was embarrassing, right? Now <laughs> now we're now again, these this is shit that wouldn't be happening if I'm in the room. I'd be looking good. I have a little pain. And the hair just right. I'll have a comment that no one else thought of about the situation. But no, mm -hmm. this is so then. And then, by the way, you start pitching. And like the other writer who uh, is a funny guy, and we have a great rapport, he's saying something. And then you ever do that like in a meeting, like a guy goes to say something about like, uh, like, let's say hypothetically, he goes, yeah, it's really hot. And then maybe I lean in and go, you know, like the uh, Arizona and the blah, blah, blah. You know, you add a little something funny. Oh, you're yeah. trying to do shit like that in a Zoom. It's like, da-da-da. And then my screen goes green, and his doesn't. Everyone goes, what was that? P? I'm sorry. What did you say, P? I go, no, I'm just, I'm just saying, yeah, it's really high. It gets really high. <laughs> yeah, it's just fucking, and you just sound like an amateur. Shit. It just doesn't have the vibe, right? Yeah. So then, thank God, halfway through, the lady's dog who we're pitching to is barking so loud that she goes, I'm sorry, I, you guys got to give me a second. My dog's barking so loud. I feel like somebody's breaking it. I'm like, oh, God, when are you ever going to be mid-pitch? And, and and it gets paused because the, the, the lady's dog, I'm like, can somebody come up <laughs> with a fucking cure for this Wuhan shit? <laughs> this shit is not working. Oh, I don't know if anybody's ever pitched and uh, during a home invasion. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now I halfway through the pitch, I learned you just got to do that. Uh, when I mean, you go into the other guy, you go like, uh, you know, and Ken can fill you in a little bit on what we mean in that area. You know, and, and he throws back to you. So, uh, I, <laughs> so I got a Zoom question. When you're in a Zoom meeting like that, right, or a pitch like that, and there's multiple squares. Are you allowed to, if you're not talking, not be in your box for 30 seconds? Even though, like, if someone says, Sebastian, not on, you go, yeah, no, I absolutely agree. But you're you're just stepped out of your camera. Is that, or is that, like, you know, rude? Are you literally, like, it's as if you stepped out of the meeting? I think if you do a step away... To me, it's like, well, let's say you're doing a stand-up show, 
Yeah. Second second row, guy gets up, walks out. You assume he's going to the bathroom, right? Yeah. Or maybe he's going outside to take a phone call. Right. He doesn't stand up and go, excuse me, Pete, got to go take a piss. I'll be right back. You could continue out with your stand-up. So the Zoom is a smaller experience. So if you leave frame, especially when somebody's talking, and if it's just if, – if it's literally for like – like this. Yeah, yeah. And then you come back. I think you have to see a body part in order for the person not to excuse themselves. Oh. If they go off entirely. Yeah, yeah. And I had this happen at the Zoom. You remember when we were doing Celebrity Zoom? Yeah. Well, we people, would walk yeah. Away, people would walk away all the time and then come back. But if it's a meeting where it's specifically about a pitch – yeah, and you leave you leave frame, and I'm talking. I don't want to work with you. <laughs> that's a, that's what I figured. So I stayed on frame, but it's hard to what you have to do is you got you go you got to pretend as if you're in the room with these people. You know, uh, you wouldn't step out of frame to itch your nose. You deal with it in the room. You wouldn't touch your nose till the meeting ended and hope there wasn't something dangling. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so. 